Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be starting episode 2 of our Hitchhiker's Guide to Detour Modding. And we're going to be going over essentially how to start modding, how to how to prepare your mod for the first time and, and start the editing process and get everything going. Uh, so with that said, um, if you're a fan of this content, you want to learn more about the Diablo 2 Resurrected modding scene, make sure you like and subscribe and let's roll right into it. Um, so. To start modding, we just need to understand that uh, all the game files that we're going to be editing for whatever you know mods you're trying to perform, um, you're going to need to use like a, a third-party program to access them all. Um, so they're stored in what we call a cask system. Um, this cask storage is also used for other games uh, in the past, like Warcraft 3 and things like that. But um, essentially, this is how all the files are stored. So if you need to edit uh you know something to make your sword do a little extra damage or something you're going to have to pull that file from cask um so with that said i'm going to go ahead and pull up our website here um and bring up our utilities page and we can see here we have a program uh, designed just for that um, created by Latic, um and we can download this to browse all of our diablo 2 resurrected files and pull out what we need um, so I've already done that. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. And uh, it's essentially very simple. We're just going to select Open Storage. We're going to select our main Diablo 2 folder. Uh, for me, it's just right on my C drive. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK and select that. And here is all the game files. So if I were to go into, let's say, Data, Data, Global, and then Excel, you can see all the different text and bin files that the game will use um, you know, to, to load everything, and these are some of the things that you can modify to, to change what you need. So step one is just understanding that you're always going to need to pull um, the files that you need to edit from Cask. Um, once you've done that, you then need to decide how you want to run your mod. Um, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, there are two different modes you can run your mod in. Um, the first mode we're going to go over is the dash direct mode. Um, so this mode is primarily designed, in my opinion, um, for developing a mod, um, or if you're trying to like generate bin files to, to offer some protection for your, your modified files. Um, so with the dash direct mode, you're going to need all 40 gigabytes of data. So this entire uh, you know data folder with you know again all 35, 40 gigabytes, whatever Diablo 2 Resurrected has. You're going to need to extract, to extract that entire um, content to your data folder here. Um, so uh, it's very easy. You don't need to worry about kind of what goes where. You just drag everything to the data folder. Um, and as long as you have the 40 gigabytes of space, you're good to go. Um, you can start running the mod almost immediately. Um, just drag everything over. Uh, use dash direct. And by using dash direct, we would put that in our shortcut. So we would just make a new shortcut and add um, our parameters at the end here. Uh, we'll go over that just uh, again in a, in a minute. Um, but essentially, that's all you would need for dash direct mode. So again, it's great if you're developing a mod, because um, you're just going to toss everything in there, and you'll know everything's kind of up to date and working, um, especially if you need to generate bin files to, to kind of protect things. Um, but uh, it's not very good to obviously share that mod with somebody else. They don't want to have to download 40 gigabytes of data you, to use your mod. Um, and it's also not that great um, when Blizzard does updates and things, and you have to more or less re-extract all 40 gigabytes of data to update everything um, because you're not sure what's changed and all that stuff. Um, the next uh, mode we'll talk about, which I believe most of you will use, is the dash mod mode. Um, this is more designed for kind of the end player. Um, so the big difference with this mode is you only need the data that you're going to edit. So for argument's sake, um, let me go back to cask here and we're going to go back to, you know, one of our text files and let's just pretend, you know, we took an armor and, and did some sort of edit to it, made it, gave, gave it one more socket or something, just anything. Um, and that's the only thing we did in the whole mod was we just really wanted that armor to have one more socket and, and we're fine. Um, in dash direct mode, I would still need to extract all 40 gigabytes of data, even though I'm literally editing just this one file. 
um, in dash mod mode, I would only need to drag this single file out and, and put it in a mod folder and edit that. And all the other 39.99 gigabytes of data, it's just going to read from cask like it always does. Um, so this is definitely um, obviously more space efficient, um, less of a hassle depending on kind of your goals, um, as well as the primary method that you'll be using to share with players. Um, so obviously if you're only editing one file, um, then it's going to be a lot easier to share that with somebody else and then just tell them to use dash mod mode uh, than to send them 40 gigabytes of data and tell them to use the dash direct mode. Um, so again, they, they work essentially the same. They're just different ways to tell Diablo 2 Resurrected that you have modified files that you're trying to use. Um, so both of them will work just fine. Uh, however, one is, is definitely a, a little more user-friendly as far as um, managing everything goes. Um, and then finally, what I want to talk about is dash text. This is kind of a special... Um, parameter that you can use with either mode. So you can use dash direct and dash text, or you can use dash mod and dash text. Um, but essentially what dash text does is every, uh, well, not every, but for argument's sake, every file has a bin equivalent. Um, so there's a bin and a text version of it. Um, so as you might imagine, a text file is pretty easy to edit. Um, you can use a program like AFJ. Uh, again, we do have links for all this on our website here, um, but you can use a program like AFJ to quickly um, pull that up and edit it, make any changes you want. As a mod maker, you may not want this. Um, maybe you don't want uh, other players editing your mod and copying things or doing whatever like that, or maybe you know it's not a big deal to you. You encourage uh, people kind of modifying it their own, whatever. Um, so you may have preferences on whether you want the mod able to use dot texts or if you want it to, to use dot bins and kind of protect yourself a little bit. Um, and that's essentially all this uh, dot text does, or this, sorry, this dash text does, is it tells the game whether to use the text files or the bin files. So uh, if you're trying to protect everything and use bins, uh, what this means is you're going to use dash direct mode to generate some bin files. Um, and then those are gonna be what you share uh, with, your, um, with your player base. Um, now you can make them use dash mod mode. Um, again, you're only using dash direct to kind of generate the bins. So it doesn't force you to use that mode for your players. Um, but in order to kind of generate new bins, um, you, you would need to, to do this. Um, and then again, if you're just using dot text, then um, you just want to make sure you have this enabled, um, and that will tell the game to use those text files. Um, and obviously, you, you would use several of them at once. Um, so that kind of breaks down the differences between them. Um, and the only other thing I need to go over is essentially where you would put these in and the special rules for dash mod. Um, because it's uh, kind of specifying um, that you're using a mod with uh, you know, different files. Um, there's a little setup just to get the correct folder structure and stuff to, to make that work. So we're going to go over that real quick and then you guys will understand uh, completely how uh, the modding works and, and what modes you can run in. So again, for dash direct, we don't really need to go over anything. You're going to extract that entire 40 gigabytes of data uh, into your main uh, data folder uh, for Diablo 2 resurrected. You're going to add the shortcut dash direct um, and then, you know, dash text or whatever, if you're trying to generate bins and all that, um, and that's it. Um, but if we're running dash mod, then we're going to go through a few more setups, um, just to get the folder structures and everything going. And I'm going to walk you through that right now. So the first thing we'll need to do is you might not have one yet is you're going to want to create a folder called mods. This is going to be directly in your main, uh, resurrected folder with your, you know, d2r.exe and all that. Um, then within that mod, you want to create a folder with the name of your mod. Um, obviously, I have a lot here. You can ignore, you know, a lot of this. I develop and tinker a lot. Um, but for our purposes, I'm just going to say we're, we're talking about, you know, the expanded mod, uh, expanded storage and stuff. So we're going to name our mod expanded. 
And then in that folder, we're going to have expanded.mpq. Um, so it's very important for that folder name to be uh, basically the name of your mod.mpq. This is done to trick the game uh, into using a folder instead of a .mpq file, which basically just adds some extra hurdles, hurdles and stuff for you to jump through. It's not needed, and I basically just recommend against using it. Um, so for that reason, just again, uh, your mod name.mpq. And then finally within there, you're going to have a data folder. Now this is where the mod starts. So just like dash direct mode, um, if we go back and we look at the task, your data folder is where all of the, the game is contained. So when you're um, using dash mod mode, you're, you're essentially recreating this file structure, but only as you need. So um, let me try to show you what I mean here. So if I go into the data folder on cask, and then I go into the data folder on here, you can see that on the mod, I only have a global and an HD folder, but in cask, there's also a local folder. Um, so all that means in this case is that uh, there is nothing in the expanded mod that edits anything in this local folder. And therefore that local folder is not needed at all. Um, and so it's just kind of ignored. And even once we go into like the global folder, it's only the files that need edited that you'll see here. All these other files that I didn't need to edit for the mod are just ignored. Um, so essentially you're just creating that same file structure, whatever it is for whatever kind of mods you need. Um, and you're just using that. Um, so that explains the, the data folder. Um, and then finally, this mod info file. This is the last important piece we need. And then essentially we're all set. So if we open this file here, this tells Diablo 2 Resurrected not only the, the name of your uh, mod so that when you put it in the shortcut, it, it registers it correctly, but it also tells it which save files to use. Um, so uh, if your mod uh, changes, you know, a lot of item stats or different things that might cause save compatibility, um, then you might have a very good reason for using your own save path um, for the mod so that it doesn't interfere with any of the vanilla characters. Um, or maybe your mods are a little more, more tame, um, there is no character conflicts, and you just want to use the old characters you already had. Well, in that case, you could take your safe path back to like vanilla um, just by basically adding a couple um, ellipses to, to tell it to go back a folder. Um, but you're, you're essentially just naming um, where to save your, your character files as well as what the name of the mod is called. So for example, if we're calling our mod the expanded mod, then when we go under our shortcut and type in dash mod expanded, um, this is how it knows uh, what mod to pull up. Um, so it, it sees this JSON file with the, um, it knows that it's the expanded mod, and then it knows to save all those um, files in its separate folder um, to cover that mod. So that folder would be something like this. Um, it would be save games, resurrected, mods, expanded, and then you have all your files. Um, so it may seem like a lot, but it's actually really simple when you break it down. It's just a real small text file. Um, you essentially just paste this code in here, replace it with your mod name, and you're set to go. Um, so I hope that's been hopefully not too long-winded explanation of how everything works, in which scenarios you might use it. Um, because obviously, again, for some things uh, like Dash Direct, uh, if you're dealing with uh, Blizzard updates like the 2.4 patch and you're trying to keep it up to date, um, it might be a lot of hassle dealing with all that data extraction and and figuring out what's going on. Um, so you might just want to kind of pay attention to that and uh, operate in whatever mode works best for you. Um, but with that said, this was again episode two of our, our new uh, series going through the A to Z of Diablo 2 Resurrected Modding. Um, I hope you got info from it and it'll be useful for you in the future. Uh, so with that said, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video and have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.